Hi and welcome to Lady Miniac's Whimsical Wonderland. In part one, we created 18 medieval mini books using the downloadable free printables. Today, we'll be decorating these charming little books and turning them into wonderful medieval manuscripts with tiny clasps and chains, making them look like they were created centuries ago. In part three, we'll embellish them further using gold foil, heat embossing and tiny gems. So let's start today's tutorial. A list of tools and supplies is in the video description. My tools are not necessarily the ones you would use, but I hope they guide you nonetheless. I prefer to use actual brass for embellishment, which gives a luxurious look and feel. Cut out tiny elements of these metal book corners, file them smooth with a steel file and set them aside. Take a look at your mini book and decide which type of clasp best fits the look you're trying to create and try out brass finishings before you glue them down. Using PVA clear drying craft glue, glue down your tiny pieces as planned. You'll see that in this tutorial I use all purpose craft glue as well as super glue on all sorts of shapes and materials. I tend to use super glue when I need an instant bond, especially in small high pressure joins. Craft glue might take longer to dry but gives a more flexible join that's not as brittle when given a bump. One gets a feel for what type of bond is needed. When creating in miniature scale, glue gets on everything, so it's just as well that craft glue dries clear. Of course, try to remove as much excess glue before it dries and always pay attention to small details. I think these brass corners look quite charming. Using faux leather for miniatures can be tricky as the grain can look too big and not to scale. Most leatherette is also too thick, but removing the white cotton backing makes it thinner and of better scale. Cut a piece about an inch and a half long and half inch wide. Cut two equal pieces which will be glued together to make the book strap. Trim down to suit the size of the book. The red leather was too bright and didn't match the red shade of my book, so instead of using craft paint, I darkened it on both sides with black liquid shoe polish. I think that's a much better match. It looks great. Apply craft glue and stick the two pieces together. Press them gently so that you don't leave any imprint on the leather. I find that these padded clamps work quite well for that. Set it aside to give the leather enough time to bond well. I use tiny brass nail heads to create the distinct metal detail that is so typical of medieval books. This tiny detail is the most important of all, as everything was bolted with metal studs in those days. I remove these nail heads with an end cutter. Before I glue any stud down, I make an indentation with a scriber for the stud to fit snugly. I'm using a flat head nail to create the metal peg for this clasp. Apply super glue in the hollow and fit the stud, ensuring that it protrudes sufficiently. In this case, I've cut the shank of the nail a little longer so that it can protrude. Try not to get super glue on your fingers as you will very quickly spread it to the rest of the book or project and it creates a fine mess. When using super glue, always use tweezers to handle tiny parts. Cut a piece of brass to scale to use as the strap's metal tip. Measure how far away from the tip to make the hole and ensure that there is enough space on the strap for the metal tip to be glued on later. Using a scriber, mark the spot and begin making the hole. Thank you. 
Adjust the hole till it fits comfortably over the stud. Unfortunately, you will have to measure and remeasure until you feel happy that your clasp functions well. You can use any type of jewellery findings to frame the hole in the strap. After some flattening and adjusting, it's good to go. Attach it in place with craft glue and let it dry. The clasp should open and close easily, with just enough tension to keep the book closed. Attach the metal tip to the strap with craft glue. Place it on a piece of cardstock and outline the outer edge of the metal tip. Then cut the shape out. This forms the back end of the metal tip. Instead of painting it with gold paint, I preferred to emboss it with gold powder to give it an extra shine. Apply glue from the embossing pad onto both sides of the tip. While holding it over a cupcake liner, generously coat both sides with gold embossing powder. Shake the excess powder off and return it to the bottle for reuse. Heat the tip with a heat gun until the gold powder melts and forms a brilliant gold texture. Apply super glue and attach the piece to the back of the metal tip. As mentioned earlier, here comes the all important stud detail. Remove the nail heads with an end cutter. Try and cut the shank off as cleanly as possible so that the underside of the nail head can sit flat. I like to add the pin size studs to almost everything as they add lovely detail and texture. Don't forget about the underside. Remember that in medieval times, everything was held together with metal studs. In case there are any scratches or dents in the embossed gold, finish off with gold metallic wax. Dresden foil is wonderful to play with. These tiny pieces can be cut out as desired to create any type of effect. I use them to simulate metal clasps and buckles. I used a square piece to finish off the end of the strap at the back of the book. Check that you're happy with the strap length before gluing it to the back cover. Ensure that the tension is good and that the clasp functions well. It seems that I overemphasize to remeasure and recheck, but because these are functional parts, they must work well. 
Create a dent in the piece of foil and attach a suitably sized stud. I tend to use the bigger studs on the four book corners, as well as in the middle of both the front and back covers. This is where most of the huge weight was carried when these books lay flat or open on tables. Painted over with our beloved metallic gold wax. Trim the foil as desired and glue it over the end point of the strap on the back of the book. It finishes it off beautifully. If you choose, you can apply a little dark brown acrylic craft paint to the outside of the book covers. Dab with a facial tissue to remove the excess and then proceed to rub and distress the book cover. This gives a warm, weathered and aged feel to these ancient books. Once again, if you don't have the correct shade of brown leather to match your book, you can paint some dark brown acrylic paint on black leather. The leather remained far too shiny, so I applied a layer of dark brown shoe paste to make it suitably matte. Cut out a matching set of foil designs for the next book clasp. These little pieces make such a big difference to the detail and book design. Using a ballpoint stylus, press hard to create grooves on the underside of the design. These will snugly hold the two small nails that form the clasp pegs. I find that this helps in holding the nails well in place as the books open and close. Attach the nails to the foil with super glue and press firmly for a few seconds. When they are dry, add craft glue and attach the whole design to the front book cover. To ensure that the clasps are evenly spaced, measure and mark out the two spots before gluing them on. It's so much easier than having to rip them off and redo them later. Make sure that the nail head protrudes from the edge so that the strap can hook in. Cut a leather strip two inches long and a quarter inch wide. Halve it to create duplicate pieces. Measure where the strip meets the nail head. Fold it over and cut a V shape into the leather. This creates the hole for the strap. Do a quick measure to ensure that the strap is long enough.
Mark a point above the hole to form the shape of a pointed arch and cut out the shape. Fit and measure the strap again. Apply craft glue and attach to the back cover. Reposition if necessary to provide the right tension. Create dents in a matching set of foil designs, which will decorate the end of the strap at the back of the book. Add a small metal stud to both of them. I know it seems like a lot of work, but one can't neglect to add these little metal details. They make this project come to life. When I attach these metal studs to the brackets, they look nice enough. However, later on in the project, I just wasn't happy with the scale and felt that they were too big, so I replaced them with smaller studs. Detail is everything. Paint the black foil with metallic gold wax to give it a metal look. In this tutorial, I use both metallic gold wax and metallic gold acrylic paint to color black foil and leather, etc. I tend to use gold wax when I want a softer, dimmer shine, as on aged metal, because it tends to rub off slightly when handled. These gold brackets will be toned down later on. Attach the foil embellishment to the end of the strap at the back of the book. It finishes the straps off beautifully. When it comes to chains, I find a length of 2 by 3 mm most suitable to scale. Cut the book chains 2.5 inches long. I use two bigger links, 4 by 6 mm, for the rings at the end of the chain. Attach the bigger links to either side of the cut piece of chain and secure it with pliers. I just love these mini chains. It is now ready to be attached. Cut a small narrow piece of leather approximately 3 quarter inch long by 1 8 inch wide. This is the book strap that the chain is attached to. Glue the one end to the top of the back cover. Test to see that it's big enough for the chain to attach and move easily inside the loop. Thread the chain and fold the other end over. Glue it to the inside cover with super glue. Don't these tiny chains just look so charming and realistic? Once again, don't forget to add tiny studs to both ends of the strap. They make all the difference. These little books have become so captivating. Mm -hmm. 
medieval book corner protectors came in many shapes, in both leather and brass. Using brown leather, cut out tiny diamond-shaped rectangles. That's the best that I can do to describe this odd shape. It was a combination of the two. Keep trimming them till they fit the book corners to scale. Of course, you can also make simple square or triangle corner protectors too. Some books had leather protectors with studs, others had full brass corners. You can later choose whichever of the two you'd like to transform these into. Use craft glue to attach the leather. Use the bigger of the studs on the book corners. Create a hollow and attach them with super glue. To balance everything, add a foil design to the centre of the front cover. If you look carefully now, you can see how much better the brackets look with the smaller studs that are replaced. You can use small parts of the brass corner protectors to further embellish your books. The effect of this filigree antique metal is quite charming on these old books. Don't forget to add tiny metal studs for some more detail. For the final clasp, cut a piece of leather 2 inches long by a half inch wide. Cut it in half, producing two small strips. Measure and ensure they are long enough. Cut out two foil pieces to use as finishings for the straps on the back cover. Also cut out two foil designs to use as clasps. This will be an ecclesiastical book, so this time I'm using metallic gold acrylic paint on these pieces, not gold wax. Gold paint stays fast and shiny and is appropriate for bright embellishment, which we need in this case. With the stylus, create a groove for the nails on the back of the foil. Once again, we are doing this to secure the nails nicely, as there is somewhat pressure on them when the clasps open and close. Attach them with super glue. Before gluing them onto the front cover, mark the spots where you'll be placing them. This prevents the misfortune of having to move them once they've been glued down. Bend the pieces to give them more contact with the book. Glue them to the inside of the front cover with craft glue. Ensure that the nails protrude sufficiently from the book edge.
Measure and mark the point of contact between the nail and strap and cut a V into the leather. Once again, measure and re-measure to ensure that all the elements fit and function properly. With the scriber, make a hole in the top centre of the clasp design, which will line up with a hole in the strap. Apply super glue to the whole back of the clasp and let it harden. Using a steel needle file, slowly enlarge the hole while gently supporting the piece. Continue filing until the size allows the nail head to easily click in and out of the clasp. Align the holes and glue the pieces with craft glue. Align the strap and glue it onto the back cover. Trim the excess leather. If you find it easier, you can also do this step before gluing the strap to the book. Finish off the strap ends by gluing the painted foil pieces to the back cover. And there you have a charming double clasped book. Oh, we're not finished. We've got to add all the metal studs. Detail, detail. And don't forget, you have to add studs on the inside of the straps as well. Now our mini medieval manuscripts have double-sided, gilded pages, brass embellishments, tiny clasps and chains. As mentioned earlier, you can choose to leave the book corners looking like distressed leather or you can make them look like metal. If you wish to do the latter, start by painting the corners with metallic gold wax. Now we need to weather a few things. Lightly apply shadows of dark brown acrylic paint wherever you want to distress the paper, leather or metal. Paint lightly over the gold wax with brown paint, creating a weathered metal effect. Your miniature manuscripts are beautiful. I keep opening and closing the clasps just because I can. Thank you for watching part 2. If you want to further adorn your mini books with gold and gems, join me for part three. Till then, bye.